Natuk Linyung Kurmuk, Natuk Merengyeta Gundij, Natuk Laka Pigrum. Hi everybody, my name is Phoebe and today I'll be talking about my perspectives on Aboriginal culture and video games and the experience that I have had personally in working with community uh, on content for game development. Uh, before I continue, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land that I'm filming on today, the Wurundjeri peoples of the Kulin Nation, and pay my respects to elders past and present. I'd also like to pay my respects to all the custodians that you are all gathered on today as well. Just as a little bit of background, I'm a proud Indigenous woman of the Yarragundus clan of the Ma Nation. I was born in Warrnambool, which is on the south coast of, of Victoria, all the way in Australia. I have been extremely blessed to have been taught my culture from my father my entire life. I grew up dancing, learning language and stories. But I also grew up playing video games and now I have successfully graduated with a bachelor's degree in game design and working with companies locally in Melbourne and internationally. Currently I'm working in a few roles. For over two years now I have been working with Dragon Bear Studios on their first title, Enchanted. Enchanted is a fantasy co-op adventure inspired by our Indigenous Australian culture, specifically of the Ma Nation. Players discover magical potions, serve otherworldly guests, and pacify monsters to overcome the evil wizard. With my help, the team has been able to capture indigenous culture in many aspects of the game, in the story, the characters, the music, and even in the game mechanics. Another role of mine is working as a writer for Star Stable Entertainment on their new project, Curie. My role is a writer to help build the world, characters, and creatures through an indigenous perspective. By including many people of different backgrounds to the storytelling and world building of your game, you get some very unique and creative ideas. Finally, I'm working with Guck as the lead game designer, working on an unannounced Indigenous-led project. Unfortunately, right now I actually can't say a lot about the game, but it's going to be very exciting and it's so awesome to be part of an Indigenous-led project. I wanted to share how important it is to have Indigenous culture included in games, along with the sensitivities that come with that. I hope my talk can be a kind of starting point for everyone to think about the opportunities it can create. Not just sharing stories or history, but also creating those opportunities for Indigenous people within the industry, from Indigenous game devs to including Indigenous people in the process of making games. Before I go any further, I would really like to recognize uh, that I have been taught my culture since I was a child, and this is a major, major privilege. As I know, many Indigenous people unfortunately didn't have the same opportunities myself, and I have to share what I have learned through a new medium that I have loved since I was a kid, games. The first point that I wanted to address comes from the beginning of my journey into the industry and working with Indigenous culture. When working with the community, my father warned me to be conscious of the fact that I have been privileged to have culture taught to me as I grew up, but some Indigenous people didn't have this opportunity. So I should be very, very sensitive when approaching people as to not upset anybody. Unfortunately, not everyone is given the same opportunity and access to resources to learn their own cultures. There's been historical events that have disturbed this and many other factors that go into it. But what I'd really like to get across here is that if you're interested in creating a game using Indigenous culture, it's really important to be mindful of people's personal histories. You don't have to know their personal histories, but just being aware that some people may not know anything about their culture and Indigenous people don't know everything about their own culture either. We don't want to create a culture of exploiting Indigenous stories and law for financial gain in this industry, but rather help respect, preserve and share one of the oldest living cultures on the planet in Australia and cultures all over the world as well. Once you've decided uh, you would like to include Indigenous culture in your projects, it's important to do some research into who you'll need to consult with. For example, there are hundreds and hundreds of clans uh, and language groups throughout Australia. Many groups, even those who are neighbouring to one another, have completely different cultural stories uh, for maybe the same kind of event. So one uh, example is that a lot of Indigenous stories actually have different genders for the moon or, or the suns, and some 
clan tribes, it is a man, and for some, maybe it's a woman. So you can see how, if you speak to one group, you can quickly recognize that we're not all homogenous or the same. Um, so when it comes to thinking about what kind of content you want in your game or where you're getting your stories and inspirations from, you really need to think about um, who you should be consulting with. So you really need to take into consideration where the game is being made. Um, I think it's really important to acknowledge that the lands that the game is being made of um, and also which parts and which areas specifically it's inspired by. Uh, so in for Enchanted, uh, my thoughts were that because the game is being created out of Melbourne, it's appropriate for us to consult uh, with the peoples of the Kulin Nations. So we are consulting with some elders um, from Wurundjeri clan. Um, but when it came to where these inspirations would come from, um, as a member of the Yarragudas clan um, myself, that's where the game's cultural content will be focused on. Um, that was my background, and I thought it would be the easiest to bring uh, my own cultural knowledge and support from my elders as well to help with the creation of the game. Um, and yeah, so whenever I would like to use inspiration from home or any language words, uh, I'll consult with my elders from down home and make sure they're up to date with everything that's happening. Um, it also depends on what indigenous stories and places um, around Australia or anywhere in the world that you'd like to take inspiration from. If you decide to create a game around Uluru, it would be a fantastic idea. Well, more than fantastic, you will need to consult with elders and community from that region. Um, before I continue, a lot of my examples may be from Australia, but it is applicable to anywhere around the world, essentially. So wherever you're getting inspiration from that has any kind of cultural ties or knowledge um, to it, go and consult with that community and those people. One thing that's probably not often thought about is making connections with your consultants, like real, real human people connections. Um, and one of the best ways to make create, uh, connections is to meet people in person. Um, I know Indigenous people and elders put a lot of value in making connections um, and being in person really is um, the best way to do it. I know we have technology that lets us meet face to face online, but it's just a different experience being there in person with somebody. Um, so go and meet any elders who will be taking the time to consult for your project in person, if this is possible. I know there can be travel barriers, um, especially um, with like COVID and financial travel barriers. But if you can potentially hire somebody in your team that you trust to go to that location for you or just do what you can to make it work. Completely understandable, this is not a you need to do this otherwise it will fail kind of deal, but it is really important to make these strong connections because you will benefit from it. Everyone will benefit from it. Um, so yeah, when I'm doing my consultations with my elders, I um, will discuss with my consultants about the game, um, what we're aiming for, the kind of feel, showing pictures and videos and even getting them to play if you have um, any kind of demos ready. Um, and if you're consulting around Indigenous knowledge, a lot of your consultants will be elders, so people who may generally not play games a lot. So it's really important that you take the time to make sure that they understand what this game is about um, just so they know the context that their culture will be sitting in. It may take uh, a little bit longer to explain and just keep in mind that very simple terms to us like RPG, first shooter, like MMO, like it's not going to make sense to people who aren't gamers. So just keep that in mind. Um, and at the end of my consultations, I offer them the opportunity to suggest what they might like to see presented in the game uh, in terms of their culture. Um, 
even if your game may have a completely different direction or it's not really what you're going for and you're not sure that these people may be able to suggest something that's worthwhile, you're like, I promise you, you really don't know. Um, you may receive a suggestion that works really well and can help spread cultural awareness and social issues. We have had some fantastic consultations for Enchanted where the elders have suggested something that maybe was... The original idea was suited for something else, but we've been able to rework that into something for the game that has actually worked really, really well. Um, so just keep an open mind and keep conversation flowing. Um, yeah, and it's especially important to keep the people you're consulting with involved throughout the entire process of the game, not just at the beginning, not just one check-in at the end once you're done and not randomly in the middle, throughout the entire process. Um, if you're a creative and you know the creation of things is not linear and things will change over the course of the production. So just because certain concept content um, and presentation of certain culture is acceptable in one scenario, if your game changes, um, the content around that has also changed and that original cultural content that might be perceived differently now. Um, so if there are any changes around the game, just check in with your consultants, tell them what's changed, maybe why, um, and just show them again the context that their content is sitting in. Um, so yeah, this is why it's important to keep them involved and up to date throughout the entire project through the whole time. You don't have to spell out every design choice or change, but periodically keep them updated. And you can use these check-ins as kind of like a ending to an iteration for the game before you start the next one. Um, it's a good time where you can cross off what's good to go, what's been approved, um, and what maybe needs to be changed in the next iteration. This will all help you avoid getting to the end, going through a last consultation and discovering that things aren't presented correctly or it's inappropriate in some way. Um, so it's just saving you essentially going, having to go change it. And it's also saving from um, any backlash or any issues that arise after the um, release of the game as well. So. It's just a really good thing to keep in mind and to get in the habit of doing as well. Um, but in the end, there might be people who are unhappy with what you've created, um, but opinions will always be varied as in any community with any game. You could have diehard fans for a certain um, series of games absolutely hate the latest game. Um, so as long as you've done the right thing with your consultations, everything will be okay. Um, but yeah, as I said earlier, there are hundreds of tribes all over Australia and all over the world, and when it comes to stories, there are crossovers and different stories for the same kind of like creatures or events or lore. Um, so a suggestion that I could make to really avoid that kind of uh, maybe incorrect backlash or people who are unhappy is just to make it really um, clear is to where um, the culture that you've included has come from. Make it very clear who you have collaborated with and where those inspirations have come from. Again, just be aware as well that there is some stories and knowledge that is sacred um, to Indigenous peoples all over the world. There is knowledge that we do not share, processes, stories, anything. Um, there is also knowledge that is men or women's business and that is not to be shared between either side as well. Um, so yeah, just being aware that those things exist and just tread carefully and respectfully. And yeah, as long as you've consulted and you've taken the time and it's done in a respectful manner, um, it's really good. By including um, Indigenous culture in games, it has absolutely so many benefits. It's a way of non-Indigenous people to learn something about Indigenous culture in a completely different form. And yeah, this doesn't apply to Australian Aboriginal culture, but every culture in the world. We have access to games developed from all sides of the earth and 
we have the opportunity to learn and experience a little piece of another culture without traveling, without leaving the comfort of your own home. Uh, today's games are hugely, hugely westernized, and when we look at the major games like fantasy, action adventure, RPGs, MMOs, when you break it down, each of these genres, you can 100% intertwine culture, indigenous culture, into any of these genres. Imagine an action adventure game about exploring and finding artifacts in the Australian outback. Or a fantasy game using indigenous cons uh, indigenous monsters um, and creatures and lore. These are the worst ideas. They're not very inventive or creative. But imagine what you could come up with when you've got months, when you've got time, when you are probably thinking, brainstorming with fellow creatives and fleshing out ideas and getting input from community. Um, the outcomes are insanely unprecedented and I think there's some really awesome game inspiration there and fortunately more games are being released from developers with different backgrounds and ideas we're starting to see those different cultural flavors and we're getting some really unique games out of it we have a major major opportunity to have culture expressed through video games and if you ask me what some of the games are out there that exist right now um, that are inspired by or are based around Indigenous Australian culture, I couldn't give you a confident answer. I can give you an answer, but not like if you ask me about the first, about the most popular first-person shooter games or the most popular fantasy games. The, like I said, these games exist, but there are very few of them out yet. Um, but this is an opportunity, an opportunity for you to create a new game. And with that opportunity... Um, comes more opportunities <laughs> and it's an opportunity for education across so many different groups of people not just for younger kids or teens to engage with culture but for people who haven't had access or don't have access to uh, knowledge about culture about their own culture it's also an opportunity for awareness around cultural and social issues as well um, and this can be a huge huge step into breaking down stereotypes and closing the gap between Indigenous and non-Indigenous people. A major, major inspiration of mine and many other people uh, I know is the game Never Alone, developed by Upper One Games and Eline Media. If you haven't heard about it, it's a game about a young Inupiat girl, apologies if I cannot uh, pronounce that right, who braves a blizzard with her fox friends to find her tribe. The developers work with Alaska Native storytellers and develop a game that is unique and full of traditional lore and culture. Now, the favorite part about this game for me is that it's narrated in native language entirely. You're guided through the story as you play as the young girl and the fox to overcome monsters and the terrain. The game is so rich in culture and is accessible to virtually the entire world and not just those traditional peoples where the stories come from. And it was told in such a beautiful way. And this story is now preserved forever in the form of this video game. Virtual Songlines uh, by Bilby Studios creates virtual experiences for ancient indigenous culture. Amongst other projects, they've also made cultural survival games where you must learn the cultural practices to survive. With the creation of these serious games, it goes beyond just entertainment and enjoyment. It has created a new format for holding documented information about Australia's Indigenous culture. It gives an unprecedented opportunity for anyone to experience firsthand what it's like to live as an Indigenous person prior to colonisation. This type of game not only shares and documents Indigenous culture, but it could provide an opportunity for Indigenous people who have never had the opportunity to learn their own culture, a chance to experience it through an interactive platform. Not only does the use of games with Indigenous content embed culture and knowledge into modern society, but it also creates many new job opportunities for Indigenous people by getting them involved and asking them to share their knowledge and be a part of the process and creating the game and bringing the stories to life. We can create more jobs. It can also be a cultural expression for those who do not know how. Sharing culture is a part of what keeps cultures alive. Paintings, stories and songs are all traditional means of sharing culture and knowledge. Writing books and journals and language dictionaries as well. But 
cultures need to evolve and adapt. Um, and although games and specifically video games may not uh, be a traditional means of sharing, these video games can be a thriving technique in embedding culture into the modern world. And to do all of this, it is so, so important to get help from everyone. I know many people might be sitting and listening to me talk, thinking that this might not apply to them because they're not Indigenous or they're kind of scared to approach the idea of putting culture into games. Uh, but the fact is, unfortunately, we can't do it alone. Um, we need the help of everybody to bring our stories to life. And as long as everything is approached and presented in a safe, respectful manner, there is an abundance, abundance of untouched content um, and the potential is unlimited. And it can, it can sound really scary, but if you are open and honest with your consultants and just, just say, look, I don't know, you know, how we want to go about this or what, what can I do to help you um, to bring this thing to life? Um, so yeah, just keep very open and honest conversation and we'll help out. We'll work together. And yeah, as creatives, we have so much influence over human culture and behaviors and ways of thinking. And the best example of that that I came up with, <laughs> I'm sure there's more, and there are many of them, um, is Fortnite and the whirlwinds that Fortnite had on Kids with the Dancers, bringing back old dancers and sharing new dancers. It has spread across the globe thanks to its worldwide popularity and accessibility. Um, people who have never played the game know the dancers and see where it's from. My dad is perfect, perfect example of this. He hates when I talk about it, but um, he loves to do these silly dances. Doesn't know exactly where they've come from, but all the kids recognize it and they think it's hilarious. Um, yeah, so... New cultures of cosplay and communities have stemmed from people having shared interests and loves for games. Imagine what we could achieve in society if we further explore the great potential of including Indigenous themes into games. If you're not into creating things and just love the experiences that games brings, or you just love to consume and enjoy art forms of any kind, um, and you believe in the sharing and of culture and diversity of all kinds are important to you, then get around these projects, right? Rally your friends, your family, tell everyone about the games you're playing and the, like the comics you're reading and just really support these smaller creators or the projects that are showcasing and sharing Indigenous culture. All of this goes towards making uh, experiences that are more enjoyable for everyone to play and for everyone to see a bit of themselves in as well. We can have new experiences, we can have, we can have familiar experiences, we can have pretty much whatever we want with games. So yeah, thank you so much for listening to me talk. I hope it has been some kind of insightful and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for listening.